What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm working on a, another Kawasaki and the problem on this one is that it's uh, blending oil and water. And how do you know that? Let me show you. Uh, we already start working on this one. I'm gonna tell you what is the process of what is the order that parts that you have to take away. So it's gonna be easier for you to check this part. But in these Kawasaki's, uh, especially in these early years, this is a 2008 250, 250X. It's a beautiful ski, it's, it's really uh, well taken on. I don't know how to say it. Well maintained, okay, well maintained. Uh, this is uh, one of you guys, one of, one of the subscribers, Roberto, is this, this key is, is from him. And he's enjoying this key and he noticed one day he, he took the oil cap off and he noticed this. Guys, when you see this, this is water getting into the system and he's blending it with the oil. So what is what can be causing this? It can be one of two things, the oil cooler, is corroded and is uh, blending the oil inside of the oil cooler or the cylinder head is cracked in one place that is making the water go into the oil galleries and making the the, the oil that color. Uh, the problem with that is if you don't check your oil and that is happening inside of the engine, it's gonna cause a lot of problems because uh, the oil is gonna lose his is lubrication uh, capabilities and it's gonna damage the whole bottom part of the ski. If you don't check regularly this oil and you use the ski with the oil like that, a few times you're probably gonna be uh, spending a lot of money uh, putting all the bearings or anything if the engine doesn't lock up on you. So guys, it's really, really, really important that you, every time you're gonna get out of the ski, it doesn't matter what kind of ski is because I, all the skis can do the same thing for different reasons. But in this case, if you don't, you don't check the ski, every time you're gonna use it, and this, uh, it, it, that is happening, and you use the ski like that, you're gonna lose the engine. So in this case, uh, Roberto told me that he noticed this right away and he didn't use the ski with the oil like that. My recommendation, for him is any way to take the engine apart, the whole engine apart, and verify all the bearings, all the oil pump and everything to see if there is not uh, premature wear on that. Because if you fix only the head and you don't take apart the bottom part and something is wrong, you're gonna regret it because you're gonna lose all the work that you did. So it's better to do it good the first time. So guys, uh, in this case, I already start working on the ski. And you can see it's already taken apart, but I'm gonna tell you uh, what is the best way to do it. The first thing you have to do is take apart all the hoses and everything from the intercooler because you have to take the intercooler out of the ski. Why is that? Because you have to take the intake manifold and the, the intake manifold, the manifold, the only way that you are going to take it out is through here. And if you don't take the intercooler, it's gonna interfere and you are not going to be able to take it out. So, to take the intercooler out, that I'm gonna show you here. You have, this is the intercooler that goes inside, and this is, I'm gonna show you everything. This is where the hose that come from the supercharger goes. So it's the black one that is, uh, well, look in the ski from behind. It's gonna be the left side of the ski in the back part. This is going to be the, the blow off valve uh, port, and this is gonna be the throttle body port. Uh, this one is uh, the intake water. This is where the water goes into the intercooler. So it's gonna, the core and the core, core is gonna cool the engine that is coming from here to here. This is the out port for the water. Um, this is in the bottom because the, every time you are not using the ski, the water is gonna drain completely from the core and it's not going to keep water inside. So it's gonna prevent corrosion. Any, any way it's gonna happen because the, the, all the water is not going to come out. So as soon as you take the intercooler out, you are going to take the intake manifold out. The intake manifold goes here in this area. It's gonna use a, a paper uh, gasket. 
and let me show you the intake manifold. This one, this uh, 2000, this, this model come with this uh, aluminum intake that comes from 2007 to 2010. You can see it's aluminum and it's used a paper gasket. And the, in, the, in the 2011, the engine changes to 260 to uh, 300 and the 300 use a plastic intake and it doesn't use gasket, it uses uh, O-rings. It's better to work on. So as, as soon as you take the intake manifold out, you're gonna be, you're gonna have access to the, to this area because the oil cooler is gonna be here. This is where you bolt the oil filter. The oil cooler is gonna be here. You can see in this case, it's already white, mixing the water with the oil. I'm gonna show you what I took out and how it looks like. Let me, let me show you first the oil, the oil part of the oil cooler. As you can see, this is a, this is where, where you thread the, the, the oil, the oil filter, the oil filter goes here. Uh, with this, this is threaded into the block and here is where the oil filter threads here. And here's where it's sealed. And this is the oil pressure uh, sensor. Let's see the oil pressure sensor. So this, this side of the oil cooler is gonna look good because uh, of the oil. It's, it, only oil is running to this side and it's gonna be lubricated with the oil so you're not, you're not going to see any corrosion. But in the other side is another story. Look at this. This is the water side. This is the water side. Of the, this is like a sandwich. You can see it has veins on this side. This is where the oil runs. And this side is where the water runs. So it's gonna cool the, the oil that runs to this back. And this is the aluminum part. And you can see this is the, the lid. And you can see how it turned out. You have a lot, of, a lot of corrosion. And this is the first thing you have to check to verify if the, if the engine, when the engine is, is, is mix, mixing the oil here, you can see it has a two, two, it is started to corrode it in those corners. And this is the most common place that is gonna happen because this part, these two corners goes, they go like this. The cooler lock goes like this in the block. And you can see these two corners have no way to go. The things that have that stay there and you're gonna find a lot of uh, water and sand and sediments, and it's gonna be getting there, filling that that corners, and you can see he started to doing his work, the corrosion. He started to do his work here, in this corner. Eh? In this case, he haven't passed to another to a, to the other side yet, but it's gonna now. I, if, if this is not the problem, unfortunately, the engine has to come out so I can put the head out because this, in these engines, uh, they have a defect on the cylinder head where the main, the, well, the cylinder, the cylinder head bolts goes through. Uh, there are two water passes with the time and the torque and the pressure that the bolt is, is making to the head is going to crack. It's going to start giving, cracking until it gets to a certain point, the water is gonna pass through there and it's gonna start mixing the water with the oil. I have a cylinder head here that I wanted to show you. In this one, it, it didn't have that problem. This one, look what happened. It broke the valve and the valve uh, broke inside, get loose inside of the cylinder head combustion chamber and the steam of the valve was stuck inside of there. So the, this cylinder head was in its garbage right now. But what I'm, what I'm telling you, the cracks that happen, you can see here, this is the bolts that, this is where, where, where the, the cylinder head bolts come through. And you can see it's really close to these two water ports. You see, in all the heads, in all the bolts, all the middle bolts have this one. So with the time, you're gonna be seeing a crack from here to here, and then from here to the cylinder, to the valve, or it's gonna crack inside, and that is gonna be causing 
the water to pass through the oil gallery or going into the cylinder. And when, when the water goes, this one, it doesn't have the, that problem because you can see all the four cylinders are black or are, are burning in, in, in a good way. In this one, this, are you gonna see this one in a different color? This is because of this one broke and he used it. But uh, if you see water in the chambers, you're gonna be, uh, one of these is gonna change color. It's gonna be cleaner cleaner than this because the water is gonna clean all the all the carbon and everything and you're gonna see the difference between one and another. So guys, you can see this is a, this is a 250 head and it's the same thing. So guys, uh, my recommendation, if this happens to you, like, like I told Roberto, it's gonna be take the engine out, take the whole engine apart, and verify everything. We have to check all the bearings, all the, uh, the oil pump, or everything uh, to see if it doesn't have a premature wear to be really certain. Because if you're gonna take the engine out, why not spend a little bit more money and make it brand new again? And check everything and it's gonna give you peace of mind when you are gonna ride the ski. Because in this case, if, the, if, if Roberto doesn't decide to open the bottom part because he thinks it's uh, okay, and yeah, we, we, we can fix the head and put the engine to run it again and it's not going to mix uh, oil with the water. But if the engine in the bottom is hurt because of this, you are gonna be using the ski, but it's gonna uh, create a more uh, clearance between the bearings and the and the parts, the crankshaft and the, the connecting rod, and it's gonna lower the oil pressure. And this is a high performance engine. These, re these engines are revved to 8,000 RPMs all the time. And it has, in top of that, it has 11 to 15 pounds of boost on top of the piston. So it's gonna, it's, it is a really hard working engine. So that uh, extra gap they're gonna create with the extra wear because of the water on the oil, it's gonna create, on from time it's gonna you're gonna you be using it the ski I, I don't tell, I don't, I'm not telling you that it's gonna break right away but I, I'm sure you that it's gonna eventually it's gonna break so guys it's better to do the work spend the extra money because the labor is gonna be almost the same uh, so that's my recommendation check everything put everything back together brand new and you're gonna be having peace of mind when you're gonna ride the ski so right now uh, Roberto wanted me to put the ski back together because he needs, it is a really expensive fix. It's gonna cost like putting everything back like 2,500, something like that. Uh, so he's gonna take take it to his home and he's gonna gather all the troops, put the money in the pocket and do um, decide what he wanna do, to so sell the ski or, or fix it. So guy, we're gonna be, I think we're gonna be seeing a little bit more of this ski so I'm gonna be putting it back together to deliver the ski to to Roberto. So I'm gonna be doing this backwards. I'm gonna be installing uh, back the oil cooler. So we're gonna be putting it back together. You can see the oil cooler is going back in. Let me clean it. Let me put this cap on so I don't want anything to go inside there. You have to take the, the oil ring, the O-ring is here. You have to take it out and put it here. So you don't miss putting it here. You have to be careful that this is the oil ring. It's gonna seal here in the block. I'm gonna be putting this here and the bolt, is, it has a bolt. 12 millimeter bolt that's gonna be here. It's gonna holding everything back. I'm gonna put it right where it belongs. Make sure the O-ring stays in place. Do not you have the, this thread, put the, this bolt. Then you have to put all the hoses back but they came out. If you don't, this is the first time for you doing this, uh, please take a picture, a photo of everything before taking it apart. 
the one that comes from the head, from here, this it is a hose that comes from here from the head, is gonna be in the top part of the oil cooler. I take all this apart, take it from the hose because uh, sometimes they, they they drop from the they drop and get in under the, the engine and it's a pain in the ass to get it out. I'm gonna be finishing the installation of the oil cooler that goes here, put the filter and be installing the the intake manifold and the intake cooler bag. You can see I already installed the intake, the oil cooler, all the wire harness. I'm installing the throttle body connections and in this particular model up to 2009, it came with the throttle cable. So the mechanic with the mechanical throttle body. On the 300s, uh, 2011 up, it came with the electronic throttle body and does the, the cable goes under here from the throttle body to under here. This one doesn't have the bolts, but the 300 had three bolts here that hold the brackets because uh, he, he, here is gonna be the, is gonna be located the TPS or the, well, the TPS, the throttle position sensor that is gonna control the injectors and the throttle body. In this case, when you put back, when you take this apart, only lose the bottom part, leave this one intact and when you tie, tie it up tie it from the bottom so you don't mess the tension of the cable okay so i'm going to be tying all that up and then putting back together the intercooler and finishing this key so let's get to work Well guys, everything is back together again. And now I'm gonna be delivering the ski to the, to the client because uh, obviously we didn't fix it. He wants to wait, but let's see. When are we gonna be, con where, when and we are going to continue this project. So guys, for now it's gonna be all for this video. Remember, if you dream of it, work for it and make it happen. See you in the next one.